Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, you're probably familiar with luminescence, the ability of different types of life to basically glow, or essentially form light by chemical means. And interestingly, this is a surprisingly successful adaptation. It's even been suggested that it evolved separately at least 94 times in the history of life. But surprisingly, for very different reasons. And it actually occurs in a lot of different types of life. For example, we know of several fungi that can glow in the dark. So yeah, there are glowing mushrooms out there. Different types of insects, such as this glowworm. Different types of marine life, such as jellyfish. And of course, different types of actual fish, such as the famous anglerfish, that somehow developed the ability to control this with their brain and thus use it for basically catching prey. But all of these diverse examples also show us that bioluminescence potentially has very different origins and obviously has very different uses. With the overall molecular process usually being somewhat similar, it involves small molecules, very often referred to as luciferins, that react with oxygen in the presence of a very specific protein or an enzyme, sometimes referred to as luciferase. And this unusual reaction that produces a huge amount of energy surprisingly releases all of this energy as light. As a matter of fact, it's up to 90% efficient, which is actually really crazy because LED lights are only 20% efficient. And so this unusual reaction that seems to exist in a lot of different species sometimes results in a production of visible light. But depending on the organism, it's used for different purposes. Although interestingly, attracting mates seems to be a very common one. And the scientists have always been curious about, well, okay, how exactly did all of this evolve? Why did it evolve? And what was the first type of an organism? Or basically, is there some kind of a general mechanism responsible for producing so many different variations and potentially some kind of a mechanism that can lead us to additional discoveries? And so naturally, they started looking for some of the first organisms that possibly had bioluminescence. And one of the first discoveries from a few years back was the evidence for bioluminescence in these unusual crustaceans. These are known as ostracods, and they're basically kind of like tiny shrimps, up to maybe 8 millimeters in length, that seem to have survived for a very long time, but more specifically are known to produce bioluminescence and are actually usually the ones responsible for so-called blue sand. The phenomenon that's actually visible on a lot of different beaches around the world. And so some of the previous evidence based on a lot of different archaeological records established that even 267 million years ago, these unusual crustaceans already produced bioluminescence. And they seem to do this only for one purpose, sexual display. It's basically a way for them to attract mates. And it's a potentially a very successful strategy because their offspring is still around. And they've been doing all of this for nearly 300 million years. But the question is really to figure out who was the first and possibly why. And they don't seem to be the first. As a matter of fact, we now know they're not. Because the scientists have just discovered something that's even older. The new study that, as always, you can find in the description below, focused on something that we know survived much longer. Corals. And actually, more specifically, octocorals. One of the oldest animals on the planet that tend to produce eight-side symmetry. Which is why they're called octocorals. You don't actually see the symmetry in this picture, because in this case, these animals are also colony-based. In other words, this is actually a collection of tiny, tiny creatures, all building a huge colony by connecting into one large piece. And just like so many other corals, they also have a relatively complex life cycle. That includes plankton stage, where they get to swim around, and the sessile stage, where they basically attach to something, forming a colony. But unlike a lot of other corals, they don't have a hard shell. And that's actually what makes them so unusual and so unique. Their outer shell is soft, and even their inner shell, or inner skeleton, is kind of soft as well, even though it sometimes contains a little bit of calcium. And so what do you do when you're such a softy? Especially when you live in an area where everything tries to basically eat you. Well, you gotta evolve with the times and you gotta come up with a new strategy. And it looks like their strategy is basically bioluminescence. They glow when touched. And that means that you can basically see them from far away, even in darkness. But why would they light up when something tries to touch them? Well, today the researchers believe that it's actually to attract the potential predators of the prey that's trying to eat them. 
And so if a tiny fish is trying to nibble at these unusual corals, it tells everyone to come and eat the fish. At least that's the current explanation. Now obviously the actual reason might be a little bit different, and the bioluminescence in a lot of different animals is still a bit mysterious, but because these corals are so ancient, it was obviously worth exploring this in order to find that source of bioluminescence in animals. Especially because one of the recent studies finally created a kind of a genetic tree for a lot of different species of octacorals, focusing on 185 different taxa. And so tracing the origins became just a little bit easier. But strangely enough, we know that today only some octacorals are bioluminescent, whereas others seem to have lost the ability, which is also an intriguing question by itself. Why? And so here, by combining ancestors of bioluminescent corals with non-bioluminescent ones, the researchers were able to work out which of the ancestors was also most likely to be bioluminescent as well, eventually landing on a common ancestor approximately 540 million years ago. Now, we don't actually know exactly what the ancestor was, but based on the genetic statistical analysis, that's essentially what it shows us. And this type of analysis is actually pretty common in a lot of genetic studies. This is, for example, how we know that there was a major bottleneck in human population just over 70,000 years ago as well. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And so back then, the Earth was obviously very different, and the complex life and even multicellular life was still just starting and becoming more complex, but we know that around this time, ice started to evolve as well. And that basically implied that there was probably already some kind of an interspecies interaction at this time, because bioluminescence implies that you're trying to communicate with someone. And in case of corals, very likely not someone of your own species. These corals don't have the ability to perceive light. And so here they were definitely trying to get someone else's attention. And not someone else had to have eyes to see the light. But the obvious question is, if the ancestors back then had the bioluminescence abilities, why do so many corals today don't? And how exactly did all of this get lost? Now, these questions don't really have answers yet, but it kind of helps us to start answering the questions about how and why bioluminescence even exists. And some of these initial explanations are kind of interesting. For example, we know that most of the bioluminescence is usually in marine animals. And so during the time sometimes referred to as the snowball earth, when the oceans were covered by ice and were obviously very dark, there might have been some kind of a natural selection for animals to basically form larger and more sensitive eyes, but also an ability to see things or to even produce light naturally, basically leading to a lot of marine organisms developing this unusual ability. But there's actually another explanation that goes even farther back in time and involves something a little bit more exciting, and it actually suggests that all of this might have started as a result of a mutation for a protein that was supposed to do something entirely different at first. Over 2 billion years ago, we know that Earth went through the event known as Great Oxygenation, a sudden influx of oxygen that was potentially caused by a sudden increase in photosynthetic organisms. And we know that this was also probably one of the first major extinction events, because oxygen is actually kind of toxic. It creates a lot of reactive oxygen species that can produce major damage to a lot of different types of life. And so in order to protect themselves, certain bacteria were somehow able to evolve a new type of mechanism, an oxygenase enzyme that would use other molecules to remove all of this oxygen, protecting the bacteria in the process through a very active energy producing reaction with all this extra energy potentially used for something else. And so it basically served as a kind of an antioxidant. But at some point, obviously through mutation, some of these oxygenase enzymes evolved to not just produce energy, but to also produce light. At some point resulting in some of the first bioluminescence that eventually found its use, basically shifting the function from just protection from oxygen to now possibly communication, sexual display, looking for or catching prey, and so on. And so the genes responsible for all of this potentially stayed with us for a very long time, which is why so many different species were able to evolve bioluminescence over and over again. Mostly because these antioxidant enzymes still exist in a lot of different species and occasionally can mutate to become bioluminescent. Or at least that's one of many many explanations for how all of this potentially started.
and though we don't actually know the exact set of ecological circumstances that produced this unusual phenomenon on the planet, we now know that it definitely started at least 540 million years ago. But I'm sure there will be more to learn in some of the future studies, and we'll definitely talk about all of this once they come out as well. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.